Hey guys, welcome back to Tammy Legends and once again, thanks for stopping by. So I know I always say, oh I'm super excited about building this one, but I really am because I've never built an astute or a super astute before. Um, so the whole build process, although it'll be similar because it's Tamiya, but I've not put this, this car together. So I am a little bit intrigued just to learn how it goes together. So, um, yeah, in this video, um, we're going to get this thing built. Now, this is a 2018 model. Um, yeah, I don't know a great deal about it, and I've covered what I do know about it in previous videos. So, um, this is just a build video. Now, I have so many goodies for this. Um, let me just move this away slightly. So, first up, um, we're running the um, small bar TRF aeration shocks. I'll bring a camera over and show you all this stuff in detail before we build, but that's going to be superb. I have blue wheel nuts. That's a must. I have J Rider, Jazz Rider, sorry, full bearing set for it, and there's a shed load of bearings in there, considering it's only a two wheel drive buggy. So, fully full of bearings. Now, full carbon chassis set from Fiberlight. Very cool. Um, so we've got the front and back carbon shock towers. We've got the carbon rear brace. And then of course we've got the main um, carbon chassis. Very cool. Body shell wise, this is one I sent. So, before I show you the body, because I've I've had it painted by Craig in the UK already. Because I've been gathering bits for this one for a while. Now, I decided to go the full TRF colour scheme on this because at the time I didn't or I couldn't get hold of the Tammy Dynastorm or a TRF 201. And if you follow this channel, you know that as soon as I bought all this and I sent the body off to be painted because I wanted a TRF style livery two wheel drive bu buggy in my collection. And then I, after that video, I got hold of a TRF 201 and a Dynastorm. So. But I didn't like the box art on the Super Astute anyway, I was never a fan of it. Um, not too sure why, it just didn't, maybe the colour of the shocks and stuff, I don't know, I didn't like it. So we've had, let me just be careful with this, so we've had the shell, as I say, painted by Craig, full TRF scheme, and it looks absolutely superb. Um, obviously we've got the wing to match. Um, wing sides, obviously just blue with black edges, they look cool. And then the under tray um, in white, but um, Craig put the Tamiya logo on it for me in silver. I just think that looks absolutely superb. And then to finish it all off, I've got a set of, you know what Tamiya calling them? This is a TRF sticker set C with the blue board and mirror finish. Um, I've not seen this style before and I've, I've had the majority of the TRF decals, but with the mirror finish and the blue outline, um, so a massive shout out to Duncan in the UK for these. Um, I'd sent him some hot shot parts and um, he kindly says, look, I've got a spare set of these, you can have them. So I was initially going to put them on the top force, but um, decided, I, think that, I think these will look way better um, on this shell. It'll make it look a little bit different. So I'll bring a camera over now. I'll give you a quick close up on these bits and then we'll get straight into the build. Right, so as I said, 2018 Super Astute. Um, lovely kit and already getting harder to find and if you do find one the prices have gone sky high um, so yeah um, Jazz Rider bearings now incredibly there's 34 bearings on this car and considering that's a two wheel drive car that's pretty insane so this is a Fiberlite full carbon chassis set um, Fiberlite are a comp company in the UK um, if you, obviously if you type in Fiberlite in Google they, um, they say they do custom work as well, but um, they've got like a small catalogue of, of stuff they do. Um, I used a Fiberlite on my TRF 503 and I was very happy with it. So that's the rear tower, rear brace, front shock tower, and then the uh, lovely, lovely overall chassis. I love a bit of carbon. Then the um, TRF small bar aeration damper set used these many times superb dampers probably my second favorite tamiya damper now the big bar version is my favorite um it these have done 25 over 25,000 miles um the it went way wrong got shipped from hong kong to canada fedex got uh, made a huge error sent it back to hong kong 
and then I eventually got this, exactly the same set as well. I had to wait for them getting back, and then they, then they got delivered back to me. Absolutely ridiculous. And then, the cheek of it, I went to pick them up. Um, they couldn't find them. Promised they'd be delivered the day after, and then they delivered them to the wrong house. So I'm, I'm feeling quite lucky that I've got these things now. And then again, the stunning body shell from Craig. Um, yeah, absolutely gorgeous. I'm in love with that. Um, I think this is going to look um, pretty bad boy, to be honest, when it's all finished. I am going to work on the wing as well, because the super astute wing is really kind of flat and pushed up. I may even put a couple of new holes in, um, just to feed it back and give it some angle. Um, as I say, I'm not a lover of how it looks. And then that under tray I was telling you about. Look at that, it's beautiful. Um, blue wheel nuts. Got to have them, especially on this car now. And then finally, last thing to show you, close up, is those TRF um, blue edged chrome mirror finish. I think they're going to look pretty epic on that shell, if I'm honest. Right, that's enough waffle. Let's get building. So I'm just getting all the bits out, just opening everything up, and we could have a problem. This is the um, probably FRP or whatever front shock tower from the kit, and that's the carbon one. Oh god, quite a bit different. Um, so anyway, I'm going to fit the carbon one and worst case scenario, we may have to go back to this one at the end of the build and then maybe get this one sent off to be done in carbon. I've no idea. It might all be good. Um, but I do know that the three holes, if you look at the two out, oops, sorry, the two outer ones here are larger, whereas on these with the same size. Um, now I would imagine that there's something going to go through those holes so we'll probably have to just put um, drill those two outside holes out slightly um, but anyway let's start the build and let's see uh, where we go from here right that's step one done um, this has not started well um, I had to trim a little bit of plastic um, around about 2mm off these fins to allow this tower to sit flat not great um i'm really curious about this front tower i just double checked with fiberlight in case they sent me the wrong thing and um it's correct they do too but they're both the same size just one's got a brace across it but it does say for vintage astute but the vintage astute had exactly the same size tower so i'm a little bit confused with that hopefully at the end of this it's not going to be an issue um but anyway, so yeah, we've got that. We've got the buckle ends on. Now I'm start I've also on stage one I'm learning what all the bearings are for. There's a pair of bearings going either side. Um for the front arm pins. So uh, yeah, that's where all the bearings are going. Anyway, let's crack on with the next step. Right, next stage was to bolt um front end down to the chassis. Um it's all a very nice fit. The holes are very precise with the fiber light stuff and you actually this, 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 the bolts won't pop through with your thumb, you just got to, they're not tight, but um, you kind of screw them in, which I kind of like, it does make it very precise. Um, so yeah, this little, that four bolts underneath, and then this little plastic centre bit over the top with those kind of style captive locking nuts. But um, yeah, looking very carbony already. <laughs> um, right, looking at stage four, that's to start making the front uprights. Right, that's up to stage five complete, which is obviously the front arms. Um, goes with pins and circlips. But you, I'll tell you what it is, you, it's a quality kit, this. You you instantly know how it fits together and how precise it is. The, there's no slop anywhere. Um, yeah, this is, this, is, this is already a very enjoyable build and a little bit different from what I'm used to. Anyway, we'll move on to step six, which is actually attaching the front arms to the um, chassis. Right, that's up to stage seven complete. So obviously everything's connected. All absolutely super smooth. Um, yeah, this is a very, very enjoyable kit to build, I have to say. Um, little front bumpers on now. So, yeah, looking at the instructions now on a step A, and that's to um, put all the steering mechanism in. Right, so that's pretty much the front end finished, I believe. So the steering's in. Oh man, I know I can't repeat myself, but this is real quality, this is. Yeah, obviously, this was Tamiya's serious attempt at two-wheel drive after 
obviously the astute and the gearbox failed the super astute came out but just how it goes together super precise and there's just bearings everywhere it's really 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 nice um the um ca uh, towing looks way out um, and the turnbuckles are correct but i'm not too concerned about that because obviously we're fitting different shocks so we're probably gonna have to have a adjust all that um at the end anyway so um yeah looking at the instructions moving on to stage nine which is starting to put um stuff on the back end so let's get cracking right that's stage nine complete um a little bit disappointed in the main chassis the two um, holes in the chassis weren't countersunk um, and obviously the rest of the chassis is so it looks like that's been missed I guess um, so I've had to um, do it myself I've countersunk them from underneath and then the rear bumpers mounted two side arms are on so I'm moving on to step 10 now which is just to fit the rear arms on it's a very strange build this um, normally it's, you, you start with your differential <laughs> Um, and then build your gearbox up or gearbox if it boxes if it's four wheel drive and then kind of the car comes around that but as you can see front end basically finished arms are going on and then after that it's the battery boxes that are going in the middle so it's yeah it's very different but I have to say very enjoyable right so that's us up to stage 12 um, so yeah very unique build this I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself um, so arms are on there's a metal bar there that you can see um, pins through circle clips on and that's what fastens the rear arms on uh, bumpers on now and the battery uh, boxes are in so uh, moving on to stage 12 now which is the actual gearbox itself um, this is a little one this is the one I'm kind of intrigued with um, it's gear diff but obviously it has a slipper on it at some point. Um, yeah, I'm just looking what how that what's gonna fit like that. Really cool, like you're gonna build the gearbox up first. And there's um oh where is it? Look at this thing. Yeah, that put the chunk of metal. Didn't know it came with that. So anyway, we're jumping ahead of ourselves, so let's start building the gearbox up. Just sort of just take a bit of time out to show you that thing it's beautiful I had no idea it came with this piece on it um, so I've not really done anything there's a bearing on the inside there's that um, shaft that's just sat in and it's just three bolts to mount the metal plate to the actual plastic gearbox um, so next up is step 13 which is to build a differential right so that's the diff built extremely messy job that um, if you build an Avante it's that style disc, the diff with the four um, gears but you have to be super careful which way around they go um, very easy to get wrong um, when I got to this stage the kit actually came with um, two four with five bearings in the kit um, so anyway yeah so we've got that there's a bearing in either end of that gear got the plastics out now so I'm going to grease it all and put it together with the diff access plastic bit so let's get that bit done right so that's pretty much the gearbox made uh, <laughs> I'm really I am really enjoying this just because it it goes together it's very different from anything I've kind of done before I was excited about this one anyway but uh, yeah, it's, it, as I said, it's really nice when it's something quite new. Right, so let's just put that there. So we're on the instructions. Um, so what I should have said is all the slipper clutch arrangements done. You fully tighten the slipper nut up and then two and three quarter turns back. Um, feels a little bit on the free side, slipper clutch wise, but again, we'll worry about that at a much later date. And everything else is greased up. So now we're on to stage 17, which is to actually um, mount the gearbox to the chassis. Right, so that's the gearbox bolted down. Now, as you may have noticed earlier on, the um, 
when I countersunk those two, there was a centre hole anyway. I've just had to countersunk that. I'm not 100% happy with them at the moment. Uh, I'm going to get a better drill bit out. I can do that afterwards, but um, it's probably about a mil too high on the screw head, maybe half a mil. Anyway, so uh, yeah, that's the gearbox in place. <laughs> so, next up is stage 18, which is this rear support and the rear shock tower. So, it's fiber like carbon, carbon time again. So, let's hope this all lines up. Right, so that's the rear shock tower assembly done. Again, tad little, tad little disappointing. I've just put that cr um, foam sponge on, which is correct, but underneath there, there's two um, holes that I had to countersink again. I'll countersunk again. Um, now, I'm not, I don't want to, I'm not like hating on fiber light because they do state that um, this is for the vintage astute, super astute. So once it's all built, I am going to go away and check and see if obviously those holes weren't countersunk. I kind of think they would need to be, but I'll, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. Nevertheless, it's no biggie, is it? You know, as long as you've got a um, a drill and drill bit, she can count the sink yourself. So anyway, that's all bolted up now. Um, next stage is 19, where that's going to get bolted to the chassis, um, and then we're going to put the drive cups in, and then it's a rear rear uprights. So let's get on with it. Right, so that's the arms on, all connected. Um, you can start, you feel the drive now. Super smooth as you'd expect. Just about, the camera's gonna fall here. In fact, let me just do that. You can just about move the diff. Obviously that's got that um, AW grease on it, so it's um, it's quite tight, but that's obviously how it should be. Um, O-rings in both um, drive cups inside and out, so that makes that with the drive shaft a lot tighter. So what I'm going to do now is, because the next stage was to be fit a motor and what have you, and we're not doing that at the moment. Um, so there's the servo uh, mounts to go in, there's the wing uh, brackets to go on, and I'll just flick through instructions and see if there's anything else. Um, it should have the gear cover goes on, um, but that I'm going to do that when I do the body shell because that's it's polycarbonate it needs cutting out and I may spray it. I've seen them sprayed white and they look great. Although equally transparent, they look as good because it has a TTC um, Tamiya Traction Control uh, decal to go on the outside as well. So anyway, I'll, I'll leave that. So I'll put everything on it now that it needs. Right. So it's not great. This. So I'll put the wing mount on no problem put the servo mounts on now the hole the adjustable one here it's it's too big so i've had to put a washer on and it needs a bigger washer actually and bear in mind it's got to be as flat as possible for the under tray so i've just kind of bodged that on for now but um yeah i've just looked at the frp deck chassis and it's um it ha it's smaller now that's a concern and i also just went to try the body on um, and the body is cut out at the back correctly, but I'm going to have to take for in order to get it on. Now, obviously, the carbon's thicker, but it's only slightly thicker than the FRP. But nevertheless, I need to check this as well. Um, it's as if it's two, three mil too far forward, which it can't be because I did I overlapped them to check them. But that's that's really odd. So, yeah, I mean, I guess this is what happens when you use aftermarket parts, but this chassis should have been cock on. Um, yeah, I need to have a think about this now. Right, I'm going to pull that video at this stage because I want to go do and ask some questions on the group um, before, I go, before I go any further. Um... Yeah, I'm feeling a little bit flat with it now because um, I was really excited about building it. It looks absolutely superb, but as I say, I've had to countersink four, what was it, five or six holes. No biggie. Um, that front shock tower is bigger than it should be. Again, fiber light stated, you know, this is for the vintage model only. But again, I don't think any of those apply to the vintage. 
I might be wrong. That's why I need to go away. Um, and my, my other concern now is that body shell where I'm going to have to cut quite a bit of the, of the back of, off it so it can sit flat against that tower. Now, even if those towers are one and a half mil thicker, which are not, that's only three mil, but it looks like the shell I have to cut more off. So, yeah, I need to just go away and see if anyone else has used this uh, carbon chassis set. Again, I'm, we'll get around these issues, it's not a problem. Um, but, yeah, the next stage would be to, to build the aeration shocks and fit them. But, um, as I say, I've kind of... I won't say I've fallen out with it, but um, I've kind of had enough of it now. I need to go get my head straight and what I need to do. And we'll do that on the next video. So, once again, guys, thanks so much for watching. It's massively appreciated. If you are new to this channel, if you could please consider liking and subscribing to support us. And if you do that, smash that notification bell for our weekly videos. And as always, guys, not so happy our scene today, but nevertheless, it looks good so far.